So I've recently become interested in penetration testing and vulnerability analysis, uh, partly based on hosting uh, some of my own content. And exploring this, I came across Kali Linux, uh, which to me looks like it's the premier open source tool for this kind of stuff. Did a lot of reading, did a lot of research. This really does seem to be the, the way to go for someone like me who doesn't have a lot of money to spend, but definitely would like to learn something and dig a little deeper in. And if you go to Kali.org, you will find information on the tool. Uh, there's been a new release here recently, the 2018.1. We'll take a quick peek at downloading this and the tools I use to validate both the uh, hash for it and the steps I went through to you know, approach installing it on a, a MacBook Pro uh, as a standalone install. So there's all kinds of good information here. There's lots of stuff worth reading. Uh, but the first thing I did was go ahead and download it. And there's information here on everything they're doing. Uh, a couple things that were really interesting to read here is, you know, the current and older processors have a 64 terabyte physical address space limitation and 256 terabytes of virtual addressing. Uh, the more modern processors have, have moved to much more available RAM. Uh, with this level 5 paging, we can get 4 petabytes. Remember that a petabyte is 1,000 gigabytes. 4 petabytes of physical memory with 128 petabytes of virtual memory. That's just huge. Uh, if you've already got a, a previous version of Kali installed, you could, of course, go through at the command line and update it. Uh, which I've gone through, but for me specifically, I'm going to look at downloading the ISO and getting it burned to a CD-ROM so I can use it to install. Uh, there's different links here for downloading. There's the standard download page. You can also download virtual machine images, so if you want to just run a virtual machine on, on one of your other computers, uh, you can do that. There's ARM images, again, that we won't look at. For me, I'm going to jump into the download page here. Uh, when I downloaded the, uh, an earlier build, I went ahead and used a torrent. You, uh, you can grab your torrent file if you want to and fire up your favorite BitTorrent client and download it as a torrent. In this case, I went ahead and just grabbed it uh, via the HTTP download. A thing to uh, take notice of here is the SHA-256 checksum. If you're going to use a torrent to download this, I would take the steps to validate the, the, the hash here to make sure that you didn't get an image that has been modified by somebody to do something malicious. And here I went ahead and downloaded it via the HTTP link. Now let me get this on screen here. And I've got the downloaded image sitting right here. Uh, on the web, I needed to find a utility uh, to go ahead and calculate checksums and validate it. And to uh, burn ISOs. Uh, the version of Windows 10, I've got the right click on an ISO we can do it here and burn image just isn't here anymore and I did some research on this and I have no idea where the ability to burn an ISO the DVD went excuse me but luckily there's all kinds of, of, of free tools out there if you go to freeisoburner.com I've used this tool before there's a nice little ISO burner here this works well under Windows 10 there's no registration for this it works and it works well Again, that's freeisoburner.com. And of course, if you download this, you use it at your own risk. I'm not you know, saying it's safe or, or not safe. It's just a tool I chose to use. At this raylinwordpress.com downloads, you'll find this MD5 SHA checksum utility. This is actually a really nice utility. Uh, a way of getting to this pretty quickly is to search just MD5 underscore and underscore SHA underscore checksum utility in Google. And you'll pretty quickly find a link to the WordPress site here. Uh, it's a little bit weird to wander through. Uh, the download links take you through a lot of advertising, etc. This is something I'll probably go ahead and spend the $10 and purchase just to, to support the developer, just because there's, you, you know, adds a couple nice features here that might be useful in the future. But anyhow, I, I worked through the downloads here and got it downloaded, and it's sitting right here. So, first thing I want to do, now that I've downloaded the ISO, is find out the checksum for the ISO. So I can go ahead and browse here, and if we get to the folder we're working out of, we have the ISO image, 
it'll go ahead and compute the, the uh, checksum here. And while we're doing that, we'll jump back to the download site. And either way, if you downloaded this as a torrent or directly from them, you want to validate the checksum. So this is still calculating them. I can go ahead and paste the one from the official Cali website here. And once it's worked through the SHA-256, it's interesting that it's taking so long. There it is. I can do a verify, and it tells me that the checksum I passed, I pasted in matches uh, the SHA-256 checksum exactly as it should. And again, this is an SHA-256 checksum. So I know I've got myself a good ISO. Uh, let me pull out a... DVD-R disc. I apologize for doing this off camera. You've done this a million times. I've got a blank DVD-R. I'll throw it into my drive. And this free ISO burner tool, like I said, I've used it on and off over the years. It's actually a really nice little tool for what it does. It's very simple and basic. Uh, once it starts here, it's trying to mount that blank DVD-ROM. There's the tool, uh, freeisoburner.com. Very simple tool. I'm going to go ahead and open from the pen testing. So let's go up and grab the image I was looking at. This image right here. I'll open the ISO. In this case, it's already defaulted to the Z drive where I've got my CD-ROM drive mounted. Uh, you will probably have to go in here and pick. And I can, you know, put in a volume label or not. And in, in my case, I left it blank and just simply go ahead and burn. And this produces just a really nice little image. Uh, I'm going to actually go ahead. Since I've already burned a disc, I don't want to burn another one. I'm going to go ahead and eject the blank disc I just put in. And we'll mound up the disc here uh, that I burned a few minutes ago. And just take a look at what ends up in the ISO. You know, I'm just starting to work through the tools. Uh, there's a tool called OpenVAS, OpenVAS, that's actually a really interesting tool. Uh, I've got it configured. I want to uh, just open the folder to take a, a view of the files on it. Uh, that you know does a what looks like a pretty in-depth analysis. You can give it an IP address or a machine name, etc. And it just kind of beats on it with, with various scans, looking for vulnerabilities. It's actually popped up a couple of common issues with WordPress that I, I probably need to address. Anyhow, here's that, that 18.1 image burned to uh, DVD-ROM. You can see there's a standard setup here. I could run it and I, and do an install here. Uh, you know, it's, it's just their distro. There it is. Uh, nice and simple to do. In my use case, uh, I've got an Apple MacBook Pro that I bought in 2011. I think probably 2011. It's, it's quad core, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gig solid state drive, etc. It's actually a really nice laptop. I bought one of the higher end ones available at the time, and I've used it on and off over the years, but I've moved away from actually using it as an Apple laptop. And kind of come back around to using Windows. And one of the things you'll find in the Kali Linux documentation is installing Kali Linux. And there's all kinds of steps here to get through how to install. And there's actually a single boot uh, entry here and a dual boot. I went ahead and used the single boot and completely dedicated the uh, MacBook Pro. It, does, it no longer has the Mac OS on it. Uh, Assuming this will expand, there it is. So it kind of talks you through the steps here. Uh, as it says very clearly here, the make model in year will determine how successful your experience is. Uh, I did a full replacement, say, of the Mac OS. Didn't really need dual boot. Got my ISO, got it downloaded. You saw how I burned it there. Uh, through the CD ROM drive in an external, or, or the DVD R in an external drive. Uh, via USB plugged into the MacBook Pro, brought it up, 
did exactly what it said to do here. I held down the option key. I got into a, a dual boot window here. The DVD-ROM drive appears in the options here as a Windows device. Uh, I had issues with the EFI boot methodology. It seems to kind of work on my version of the MacBook Pro. It works enough to, to, to get it, the installer running, but I can never actually get the machine to boot off the hard drive. Uh, excuse me. So I went ahead and just, just did the standard Windows install on it and told it to use BIOS rather than EFI uh, to generate the boot information. You can read more about that here. Went through the steps here. Uh, went through the install, and of course this will take you through everything uh, that I did to actually get it installed. I haven't attempted to do a dual boot with it. I have also built up on my Ansel, uh, mounted the same ISO on the Ansel. The newer version of Batman lets you mount ISOs to build uh, outlets. And went ahead and installed the ISO as well onto an outlet, and I did my initial couple of builds there to understand the process before I committed to the MacBook. Anyhow, it's just a really quick video on uh, downloading Kali uh, 18.1 and getting an ISO burned to DVD-ROM and kind of the steps I took, which are documented on their webpage here, of getting it onto a bootable machine. Uh, if you're looking to do a little bit of pen testing or learn more about vulnerability scanning and those kind of things, this seems like it's a really accessible resource. Uh, there's a couple of other interesting things uh, to point out here, if I can find them. Uh, let me step back. Kelly, I'm going to end up the same place I just was. Uh, there's this Kelly Linux Revealed book that you can buy on Amazon. I actually bought a hard copy of it that kind of goes through how to install Kali, the basics of command line inside of the, uh, the, the Linux shell. Most people are coming from Windows. It is essentially Unix, so it is different. Uh, there's an electronic version, PDF version of that book available. Yeah, right here. So you can come in and you can download the PDF of that book as well. You don't have to spend the $30 and purchase it. Uh, for me personally, I like having a, you know, a physical book in my hands. I'm, I'm pretty old school, as those uh, who've watched the stuff I do can attest to. Anyhow, I think the book's worth a read if you're thinking about installing this. It'll take you through a lot of these things in more detail and give you some basics on the command line in Kali if you're not familiar with it. It doesn't get into actual penetration testing uh, and how to use the large suite of penetration testing and vulnerability scanning tools that are pre-installed uh, in the Kali build. Uh, you'll, you'll find other books and documentation on that. Anyhow, I'll wrap this up here and uh, get this posted, and we'll talk soon.